Hello and what about you? Well, it's getting close now, isn't it? Yeah, it's the season of goodwill to all men. And what better way to celebrate that than to have Jerry Adams appear at your front door singing Christmas carols. Tis the season to be jolly. Chucky are la 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 la. Here's what I find strange. Your boy who answered the door was rather blasé, wasn't he? Now, I've got to be honest with you. If I had a knock at my door late at night and I opened it to find Jerry Adams standing there, I'd be out the back door. I'd be out the back door and over the fence and away. I'm telling you, I would be away. Of course, there were demands that Jerry apologise for the insensitivity of his chunky uh, or la ha ha ha. And, uh, but he was quickly defended by Michelle O'Neill, who, who came to his defence and she said, and I quote, um, Mr. Adams regularly does light-hearted videos to support charities. Uh, and she added, I don't think Jerry has anything to apologise for. He would never have set out to intentionally harm or hurt anybody. Of course, the problem is Sinn Féin, for the first time, have a real chance of becoming the government in the Republic. And um, there seems to be a wee split between how the North is approaching this and how the South, because a TD down there, Sinn Féin TD, called Owen Breen, he, he, he criticised Jerry. He said that, and, and I quote, uh, he should apologise, saying that people should be careful with their language, with reconciliation in mind. You cheeky wee Baza, you cheeky wee, hey, darn you, hey, darn you, criticize the glorious leader. Anyway, Sinn Féin are left with a conundrum. They're left with a conundrum. What to do with a problem like Jerry? Now, I'd suggest maybe they have a wee chat with Peter Robinson, because he had a similar wee problem called Iris, and you haven't seen her for a while now, have you? Hmm. <laughs> Well, it's been another tough week for Boris. Yeah, it started off with one Christmas party and now there's four getting investigated. And I asked Santa, all I asked Santa this year is that he would bring me a picture of Boris at a party and he said yes. Yeah, Boris appeared doing a quiz at 10 Downing Street when the rest of the country was in lockdown and uh, families weren't allowed into hospitals to even say goodbye to family members. And, well, uh, you know... Another picture emerged of another party at 10 Downing Street and they were having a real good time. Oh, there was laid on food and not a mask or social distancing in sight. What I've noticed recently is Boris's language has changed. You know, remember he started, no party, no, no rules are broken. <laughs> now it's subtle change. Now what he's saying is, I broke no rules. I broke no rules. That's the slight change in, in Boris's language. And he needs to change because he's in the diffs. He had to rely on Labour support to get his own COVID regulations through Parliament last week. <laughs> the rats are putting on their life jackets in the Conservative Party. And Boris may be writing his biography sooner than he presumed. And when you consider the sort of people that Boris has in his party... Leaving might be more relief than a punishment. As an, ex as an example, let me present to you a specimen called Desmond Swain, a COVID minimizer and one pompous, posturing, pretentious prick. Withstanding the carnage on our roads, certainly killing more people than COVID at the moment, some of us still decide to drive. And with Omicron about to explode across the whole country, Boris appeared on a special announcement sitting in 10 Downing Street with a stain on a suit to announce a new national challenge. Yes, every person is supposed to get the booster. And who's to carry this out? <laughs> the NHS, of course. The NHS, which was underfunded, understaffed and underpaid by the Tories for the last 10 years. Yeah, they're just going to step up after two years fighting the pandemic and do Boris's bidding. And he said, blah, 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 blah. I'd be thinking of you. Blah, 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 blah. I'd raise a glass to you in 10 Downing Street. Blah, 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 blah. And do you know the amazing thing? You know the astounding thing? They'll do it. They'll do it. They'll do what needs done. 
they will step up and they will get the a million vaccines probably a day that's needed to get us over this because that's the sort of people they are and that's what they've been doing for the last two years and do you see if we don't take care of them when this is all over shame on us we badger beard Colum Eastwood hate his moment in the Commons during the week he stood up Churchillian and he gave it to Boris, he gave it to him large. Excusing rule breaking by his own MPs, ignoring rule breaking in his own house. He can't even lead Tory MPs to vote for his public health guidance. How does he expect to lead anybody else? Surely now it is time, Mr Speaker, for him to do the right thing. The only thing left him to restore public confidence and resign. Surprisingly, Boris wasn't too annoyed or worried about Colum considering the SDLP only have two MPs. But uh, I, I know what I noticed, something caught my eye when I was watching Colm. And it was the fact that, that, that we, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Donaldson was sitting right in front of Colm. And there was something about Jeffrey caught my eye. I, I just thought, there's something not right there. Now the miracle is you're able to sort of stop TV and that old. Oh, I remember the time you couldn't stop TV. You can stop TV now and you can rewind it and you can zoom in. So I zoomed in and I zoomed in. Why? He's got the, he's either got the mask on upside down or he's pulled the mask over his eyes and he's got his glasses over his mask. We man can't see. There's no way that we man can see, which indicates to me I think Jeffrey's losing it. I think Jeffrey's beginning to lose it. And there was another clue about Jeffrey losing it during the week because Jeffrey said that he was going to pull the assembly down if the protocol wasn't got rid of. Now that would have struck terror in any prime minister except he said it before and he said it before he said it this time. <laughs> Talk about boy crying wolf. Now what do you expect? What do you expect with the wee man? He can't be right. Like how could you be right? When you've got the legs of Sammy Wilson and Edwin Pooch to control. We man's demented. He's, I'd give him, I'd, I think he'll be gone before Boris. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I wouldn't be surprised if he turns up in Parliament next week wearing his glasses back to front. I'm, I'm, you keep your eye on him. We man's not right. He's not right. Well... Omicron is here, and it's multiplying quicker than Catholics on Viagra. Oh, so I uh, haven't had my vaccines and my booster. You'll not be surprised that I would suggest that you all do the same. Please, get it in the arm before you get it in the neck, because the stats are in. And I see you wards between 90 and 100% of, percent of patients are unvaccinated. So I don't want to reach out to the rabid anti-vaxxers and, and COVID deniers who have drank the Kool-Aid. Life's too short and I'm too old. But I do want to talk to the people who have bought into the misinformation and disinformation and who are genuinely afraid to get the vaccine. I understand. The truth is out there. But it's not to be found in conspiracy websites and on anti-social media. Now is the time. Now is the time. And it may not come again for you. So there's no shame in making a mistake. I have spent my adult life apologizing for mistakes. There's no shame in that. The shame is having made the mistake, staying with the mistake, because our egos won't let us admit that we've made a mistake. That's, that's to be shameful. Because they say you can judge a person by the company they keep. This is the company you're now in. This is the company you now keep. And if you can look at that and say honestly to yourself, yeah, I'm okay with that, fair enough. But if you can look at that and think, that's not me, that's not me. That is not who I am. Then step up. Now is the time. Protect yourself. Protect your family. Protect the NHS. Oh, and by the way, I haven't been paid for this. 
But if you know anybody who will pay me, absolutely, send them my way. I wish you all a very happy and healthy Christmas. That's all, folks.